Tatiana's Psychic Cafe. It's so great to have you here. We have a huge show for you. We have an interview with the tarot lady, Teresa Reed. There are very few people on the planet who have been full-time tarot readers for longer than I have been. Teresa Reed is one of them. I caught up with her this week. We had a wonderful conversation. I'll be playing that interview in just a couple of moments. But first, we have to do our card of the week. So let's see. We're going to shuffle, 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 and see what we got. Our card of the week. Ah, Queen of Wands. This is actually my significator. Uh, when the Queen of Wands represents a person, it's usually an adult female like me, uh, born under a fire sign, which I am not. My rising sign is Leo, which is why I use this card. Uh, the Queen of Wands is intuitive, warm, has a good sense of humor, and is very passionate. When the Queen of Wands comes up in a reading and you don't think she's representing a person, she, should, she could be telling you to nurture your intuition, to nurture your creativity, to nurture your passions. So the next time you see the Queen of Wands... Take it as a reminder to nurture the fire within. When we see this as our card of the week, let's all make a commitment to nurture that fire, our creativity, our passions, our sensuality, and our spirituality. And so now, without any further ado, let us go to our interview with the tarot lady, Teresa Reed. Teresa Reed, welcome to Christiana's Psychic Cafe. How are you? I'm great, Christiana. Thank you so much for having me here today. Well, I, you know, it is, I'm really honored to have you here. You are one of the very few people in the world that I think really embodies what it is to be a full-time tarot professional. Uh, I like to put myself in that category. There's a few other people out there who I, I think wear that title well, but you're one of the first that comes to my mind. So I'm so excited to share you with everyone here at the cafe. And why don't we start right away by getting your website out there? How can people learn more about you? How can they contact you for a reading? Very easy. All they have to do is go to www thetarolady.com. All the information's there. They can contact me there. They can also find me on Twitter. I'm on Twitter all the time at the Tarot Lady. It's always my handle over there. Okay, perfect. So I'd love to start by asking you just some questions about your history and how you came to be the Tarot Lady. Um, as I said, you know, there are so many wonderful tarot hobbyists, uh, part-time tarot readers, but mm -hmm. very few hardcore full-time tarotists. So, how did it all begin? Well, I always like to say that everything with my career is accidental. You know, I have to kind of turn this uh, sound down just a little because it's echoing. Um, my career is actually quite accidental. It's, uh, I always like to say it's not what I intended to do for a living. I had a lot of other artsy ambitions. Uh, got into tarot when I was a teenager, and it was also, again, quite by accident. I had a friend whose mother was an astrologer, and she had done my astrology chart, and uh, I got fascinated with that. Uh, I do want to say, though, I, I grew up in a household that was a little unusual. My mother and grandmother were both quite intuitive. So there was an open-mindedness towards all that, which is great when you're interested in those sorts of things. So anyhow, had my astrology chart done and thought it was awesome. So I started studying astrology, which back in the day, there really wasn't a lot. And there wasn't a lot back then for tarot. So we're going back like 30 years. And uh, one day I was in a bookstore looking for some astrology books, and they had a tarot deck there. And I thought, well, you know, I've seen those in the movies. I've seen that in, like, the James Bond flicks. And so I thought I'm going to get me one of these and see what it's all about. 
And so I got my first deck and went home and started playing around with it. And what I found is that uh, I resonated with it really much better than I did with astrology. And I think the reason why is because I'm a very visual person, I'm very intuitive, and just working with those little symbols seemed to like trigger something for me. So I uh, really got into it pretty quickly and uh, started reading a lot and practicing on anybody who would allow me to. Not many people want a teenager with a tarot deck doing readings for them, but I had a couple of good willing participants, so I was lucky in that way. And then I just did it as a hobby for about 10 years. And uh, what ended up happening, my career also started by accident. I had moved back here from New York and I was coming back to take care of my dad because he was quite ill. And so I thought, oh, I better get a mindless job. I don't want to go back into, you know, working in an office or any of that. So I decided to get a job bartending, which, by the way, for bartenders of the world, it's not a mindless job. You guys work very, very hard. Um, but anyhow, I ended up being put on a couple of really dead shifts. So I thought, I need to do something here. I'm bored out of my mind. So I started bringing my tarot cards into my work environment. And what ended up happening is the word spread. And suddenly my days became quite popular. I even went to a different bar and my audience followed me there. And I ended up with a new audience. And so what happened then is I would have people saying to me, this is really great, but I would like something more involved. I would like something more in depth. I'll pay you. I thought, oh, okay. Hmm. Maybe I should think about starting a business. And uh, I always have to laugh at this. The guy who owned the bar, uh, I had mentioned to him that, oh, I think I'm going to start a business doing this. Well, he went behind my back and told somebody that I would fail. And I'm a very rebellious person. As soon as you tell me I'm going to fail, then it's on. So I basically quit my job, started with not a clue about how to run a business. I was very young. And I hit the ground running. And you know what? I never looked back. It's been going over 21 years now that I've been full-time employed. And this is before the days of the Internet. This is before it was easy to market. So, you know, it was a tough run in the beginning, but here I am. So that's how it all began. That is phenomenal. And I, I have to say it is, it is fun for me to see how, in some ways, your story really mirrors my own. In a right. lot of ways. Uh, so that's just very cool. So a couple of questions from that. First of all, that first tarot deck, was it the, the rider in the yellow box? No, I had the Marseille, Marseille's deck, uh, which I could barely even pronounce it, as you see. Even though I spoke French, I speak terrible French. Uh, that was my first deck. Uh, because, again, you got to remember, there wasn't much back then. These tarot people who are starting now, you guys have it made. I don't want to sound like an old part now, but you've got all these decks to choose from. You've got the Internet. I started with that deck, and it was a rough one. But I was a, a determined gal. I'm very, uh, when I get into something, I really get into it. It's that moon and Scorpio side of me. And... Um, so I plugged along with that for a while, and one day I was back at that bookstore again, and they had one of the Rider weight decks. And I said, oh, I'm going to get this one. It looks pretty. Went home, and I'm like, boom, now this really speaks to me. I love the images. I love the bright colors. I like that the pips had illustrations on them. It just made the deck more fun for me, and for my visual way of dealing with things, uh, it, it really struck a chord, and it just seemed like my readings then really started to hit home. So what is your, I mean, do you have a favorite working tarot deck right now this minute? Well, my all-time favorite deck is not a working deck. It's the deck that is my personal deck. It's the Baroque Bohemian Cats Tarot. Sure. <laughs> and the reason I like it is I love the art and, uh, this is kind of silly, but I have a thing for cats and Victorian clothes. So that is my favorite deck. But the deck I normally always end up going back to is the Rider Waite. But I will deviate. I will go and I'll grab maybe some days I'm in the mood for the Gaian Tarot. Or I might grab the Spiral Tarot, which I really have been getting into lately. The Hanson Roberts is a favorite. The Gilded Tarot. Um, you know, there's other decks, too. Off the top of my head, the Cosmic Tarot, which I love a lot as well. So I tend to go between those decks. Once in a great while, I'll play around with something else, but I always end up coming back to those decks. Sure. 
Sure. We like a lot of the same decks. I, I must say I do not like cats and clothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's my one weird quirk. <laughs> but, you know, my working decks are also uh, Spiral, Hanson, Roberts. Uh, I love the Llewellyn World Spirit Tarot. I know they just discontinued it, but I, I thought that was a great one. But, you know, primarily we're right here at my desk, and here's my weight deck. And Mine too. I, <laughs> there it is. So, now I wanted to ask you too, I mean, essentially you started reading for the public in a bar. Yes. And... I de facto sort of did, too. My first gig was like a psychic fair. But in trying to build my business, again, pre-internet, uh, my early venues were a laundromat and a bar. Yeah. And I was very cool with it. I was very cool reading for drunk people. I, I didn't drink when I was reading. I still don't. Um, but I know there are a lot of readers who are very uncomfortable with mixing those two energies together. I just don't have an issue with it, and I'm, I'm wondering what you would say to someone who is kind of like, ooh, you bring your cards into a bar, what's up with that? Well, here's my thoughts on that. Um, now that I am a lot older, I have become, and I've been at this game a long time, I don't do the bars, I don't do public appearances, I don't do parties anymore, because, you know, they're really a lot of work and they're really hard work, and at this stage in the game, uh, I am quite aware of my mortality and my limits now. Uh, staying up late and doing readings doesn't wash for me anymore. I need sleep, you know. Um, but back in the day, uh, I, I have to tell you, I think it's the best way to learn. It is the best way. When you're in a bar, you have no control. You deal with every Tom, Dick, and Harry under the sun. It is a baptism by fire. If you want to get good tarot chops, if you want to learn how to be a fast, efficient, what I call a tarot gunslinger, then you actually should get out and read in bars and read in places like that. If you're a newbie reader, there is no better way to learn. Because here's the problem. For a lot of people, when they do start their businesses now, they shelter themselves. And then all of a sudden, if you're coming across a situation that you're not prepared for, you get dumbfounded. You know, Christiana, I had so many experiences happen in these bars and parties, I, uh, really extreme stories of people being rude and drunk and throwing beer on my cards. And I had a guy try to physically attack me once, all this crazy stuff. But I also met a lot of really good people that way. And I learned to read for people from every age group, every gender, every orientation, every, you know, color, every background. There's nothing more colorful than reading in a bar or a psychic fair because you're going to meet any anybody from any different type of situations. It's not filtered, and I think that's really going to make you a better reader ultimately in the long run. Absolutely. Absolutely, and I think that you learn if you can, first of all, you can work in that environment, you can work in any environment. Yep. And if you can work that kind of a crowd, you become good at telling the truth, giving a competent reading, but also being entertaining. Yes. Absolutely. And I think there's value to being, even in the, the deepest, most profound, most spiritual reading, there is value to being entertaining. I agree. And also for me, I'm an introvert. I'm actually a pretty extreme introvert in some ways. And doing it in that kind of setting got me over that. And it allowed me to learn how to connect, not shut myself down. So also, if you're the type of person who tends to be really more of a quieter nature, to yourself, private person, being in that kind of environment helps you to get over that. And it's Absolutely. really good. If you're going to be a pro, you have to get over that. Absolutely. Now, you have created, if, if, I, if I remember correctly, you have created an interesting product. I think it is called Tarot Business in a Box. Is that yes. right? Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Tarot Business in a Box is something I created to help other aspiring tarot professionals. And it's a digital downloaded kit. So, you know, when people purchase it, they don't have to wait for something to arrive. Boom, it comes right to your computer. And it's based on my, you know, 20 plus years of reading full time. Uh, my theory is, boy, if I would have had that back in the day, some of the mistakes I would have avoided, 
some of the drama I would have, uh, I mean, I probably would have been doing really well a lot sooner. I have to be honest with that. I didn't market. I didn't know how to run a business. I had to learn everything the hard way. And so my, my idea behind it was I want other people not to have to go through what I did to figure this garbage out. So that's the, the reason why I created the kit. And it's based on my experience, but I also interviewed some awesome experts uh, like and Alexandra Franson, who's my copywriter, to teach people how to like write better copy for their websites. I interviewed Yolanda Fascio, who's a fantastic coach, to talk about boundaries. So we've got interviews in there. We've got things for the digital world. It, it's really a pretty modern kit. And what I also do is when it when it's time for an update, I send the updates free to the people who have purchased the program. Right. So. My goal is to keep people running their business in a current way because business is changing all the time. And you and I, we've been in business a long time. Business now is a completely different thing than it was oh when I gosh. began. And now with the internet, um, my business has flipped on its head. And I used to do almost all my work word of mouth. It was all in person. And now, thanks to the internet, I would probably say that has switched to the point where it's 80% of people find me on the internet. And most of my readings now are done over the phone or email, and uh, everything has shifted. It's a much different world. Right, right. Yeah, I think about that. I think about the beginnings of my business where I took out print ads in, in newspapers, and I made flyers and went around town and put up flyers in yep. businesses and on bulletin boards. And I don't do any of that anymore. No, neither do I. Nobody does that anymore. <laughs> I mean, right. who does that? You don't need to do it anymore. That's the brilliance of the internet and social media. Uh, it has helped people like us who are working in fringe industries find our audience and find people who really truly want to work with us, not people who are dragged here by you know a partner who thinks it's going to be good for them. Now through the internet, we get people who really like us. They like what we're doing. They're into it, and that is even more exciting, it makes our work more rewarding, I think. Absolutely, absolutely. So, okay, uh, you mentioned something. Now, let's air some dirty laundry. Um, when, when you talked about, you know, the mistakes that you made, the drama you went through early in your career as you're kind of doing the trial by error, how do we make it work? Give us a story of a mistake that you made, some drama that you encountered. Share. Well, I can give you, <laughs> I can give you terror horror stories. Uh, I can also tell you business mistakes. You know, some of the business mistakes I would make in the beginning was uh, all boundary related issues. Uh, sometimes what I would do is, uh, you know, I went to, I would be really shy about charging people. I would discount the heck out of my work. Or I would tell people, well, you come in and you can take as much time as you need. That was the biggest mistake ever. So I would have somebody who would come in, pay a very low rate, and they would try to sit here for an hour and a half. And I would be completely burnt out. I didn't put limits on my time. I charged a very uh, low rate. And again, that's what you do when you're just starting out. You just don't know. So I... Uh, learned very early on that you know what people don't respect you or your time if you allow that to happen uh the other thing i'll give you a terror horror story it's, it's probably my favorite one back <laughs> back when i was starting out i assumed you had to read for everybody and that you just went wherever you had to go so there were a lot of times where i would get um I would get people wanting to book a party and would be to a very, very dangerous side of town. And I just went ahead and did my work because I was going to serve people. Uh, and that's a really bad business attitude. People, you don't have to serve everybody. You don't have to go to dangerous areas to do your work. You really don't. But anyhow, I got this invitation once and I go and it's in a really bad neighborhood. And so anyhow, I get there and the lady answers the door. First clue, she answers the door with a black eye. And I thought, okay, she's got a black eye. Something isn't going to be good here. We go up the stairs. The whole place is extremely dark. I could barely see it. I've got terrible night vision anyhow. So get up there. I'm in this room. It's crowded with people sitting around me. And they're asking questions about guns and crime and crazy stuff. That You think that's bad enough, right? But 
all of a sudden I thought I saw something go across the table. I thought, oh, it's just my eyes playing tricks on me. And so I keep reading, and then all of a sudden I saw I saw something else. And suddenly my eyes adjusted, and what I saw were cockroaches, swarms of them running up and down the walls and across the table and mice on the floor. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, my God. And I pull my purse up, and I'm sitting on the stool holding my purse, reading the cards, getting through it, praying the entire time I'm not bringing a cockroach home and answering these crazy questions, these insane questions. I got out of there and I thought, what the hell am I doing? And um, I went home and I was sitting with my husband and a couple nights later, the movie Training Day was on. I don't know if you've seen that with Denzel Washington. Everyone should see that. Well, there's a scene in the movie where Ethan Hawke's character is in a bathtub and there's all these guys with guns to his head. And I looked at my husband and said, oh, my God, I've done parties for people just like that. <laughs> he looked at me and goes, what the hell are you doing? Where are you going? I mean, I didn't discuss business with him. And I said, oh, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, you know what? You're not doing that anymore. Uh-uh. You're this little tiny woman, because I'm like five foot two, you know, 120 pounds. He's like, you're not going there anymore. So that was the end of me going to bad areas. But this is, again, a very simple mistake that a lot of people when they're new in business make. We think we have to take care of everybody and we will sometimes put ourselves in icky situations and you know, that didn't have to happen, but I didn't know any better. You know, so what a crazy lesson though. Crazy. And you know, the thing is, even if you have some boundaries as far as where you'll go or when you'll go, you can still end up with crazy, crazy parties. Oh, yes. I had one in a very upscale neighborhood. Um, but it, it, this is the one time in my entire career where I left a party in the middle of a party. Wow. Right? And I just got up and left. I was like, I'm not doing this. It was... A family, you know, like the family will gather. It was the mother, the father, the grandmother, the neighbor, you know, this the small mm. group. And they all hated the mother, my hostess. Mm. They all hated her. The six-year-old, using language more, pro, more uh, I was going to say more profound, but that's not the word that I wanted to use. Um, the six-year-old was swearing. We'll put it that okay. way. Um, and asked me, asked me if I was in the reading going to tell his mother that his mother was an effing slut. <gasps> Whoa. The father, of course, he learned it from his father. The father is asking the same thing. The mother-in-law, the father's mother is saying to me, please tell my daughter-in-law that she is an effing slut. You know, I mean, just this crazy, crazy stuff. And I just packed up my bags and left. You know, I, you know, crazy, crazy. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, these things can happen. And so there's also the question of how do you handle it once you're there? Mm -hmm. The image of you sitting there hoping no roaches will crawl into your mm -hmm. pocketbook, but gamely doing your job. You know, I've done that, too. Mm -hmm. Uh, not necessarily with roaches, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I've gotten to parties where people didn't have a place for me to be, where they wanted me to sit on the edge of the waterbed and yep. put my cards out on an ironing board, because that's what yep. they had. Um, so, yeah, the party scene is crazy, but but fun. And And I think you're right. Boundaries are important and how you charge. So tell me, today, if someone wants a reading from you, what are your rates and, and what are your rates based on? Do you charge by the hour? Do you charge by the spread? How do you do it? Um, I have a variety of different things to suit different people's needs. I have email readings and as of today, um, I charge $20 per question. And I also do phone readings or in-person readings. And the phone readings, you can choose between a 15-minute reading for 30, half-hour reading for 55, or you can get an hour-long reading for 110. Um, my whole thing is based on 
you know, my years of experience, but also it's based on I'm in a area where this is a price that's appropriate. So when I'm pricing things, I am looking at, okay, here I am, I'm in a blue collar area. And so I'm going to charge at a rate that is reasonable, but still reflects my skills. I think if people are living in certain areas, like if I was living in New York, I'd probably charge a lot more. But for now, this is a rate that I'm really comfortable with. And right now, as of this time, I have no intention on raising them because people are like struggling right now. So my rate's been the same for probably about two to three years. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember when. I changed the email readings so, though recently because I do a lot of email readings. Yeah. A lot. Oh, yeah. I do a ton of those. So I had to like raise the rate because it was like getting out of hand. Interesting. So when you do in-person readings, where do you work? I have an office located right in my home. And it's nice, it's spacious, it's comfortable, it's eclectic and quirky. Uh, it's very quiet. So it's really the perfect space for me to be reading for my clients. Mm -hmm. And I've enjoyed reading out of my home as well at different points in my career. There are some readers uh, who are just starting out who are very uncomfortable about essentially inviting strangers into their home. What are your thoughts there? I totally get that, especially if you're a single woman. But I happen to have a very protective and uh, potentially violent husband, so... <laughs> So I don't have to worry about that. He is an artist and a musician. So he is also like me, self-employed. So we are both uh, within each other's vicinity. And I've had to use him on a couple of occasions when there have been male clients who've been out of hand or people showing up unannounced. I send him down. And so it's wonderful having my little... Uh, He's kind of like my velvet rope here, and he's fantastic. But you know what? If you're not comfortable with that, and especially if you're a single woman, uh, I recommend seeing people in, like, a coffee shop or a bookshop, you know, an area where you're going to feel safe and protected. I don't think having it in the home is going to suit everybody. Also, if you have a home office, you are going to have to have more insurance just in case somebody, you know, trips and falls. Uh, so those are other things to keep in mind, and not everybody out of the gate can afford to pay that extra insurance. So, you know, it's really going to depend on what you're comfortable with and what's affordable for you. Absolutely, absolutely. So an interesting ethical question in the tarot community around future predictions Right. Not every tarotist makes future predictions. Some feel that a tarot reading is de facto mm -hmm. a predictive thing. And, and if you're not doing predictions, then what's the point? Where do you stand with all that? Well, over the years, uh, my thought is different strokes for different folks. Not everybody's going to do readings the way I do. And you know what? That's great because there are clients then who are going to want to go to them and not to me. So I have no problem with people not reading the way that I do. I mean, I read reversals. There's a lot of controversy on that, but it's just the way I do things. So I don't have a beef with how somebody reads or what their ethics are. You know, I like to mind my own business, uh, really mind my own business. But as far as I do, I like to do it like this. I, I lay out some predictions, and this is what may happen. With all this, I like to let people know uh, they can change things at any time. And when we look at potential outcomes, that's probably a better way to do it. If there's something people don't like, well, then what we do is we get very proactive and we look at strategies. So maybe we can change that situation. Uh, I'm a huge, I'm not a fatalist. I'm a believer that we can tweak our fate at any time that we give and choose by making conscious choices. And tarot for me, it's a roadmap. It makes you conscious. It's like if you're driving and you know there's a cop with a speed trap, you know what, if you know that, you have the option then to slow down and be more careful. Same thing with tarot. It shows you what may come, and you can still write your own reality. That's how I view it. But again, not everybody does it. There's people now who do tarot therapy. There's uh, people who do interactive readings. There's people who use tarot for completely different things, like for creative prompts or, you know, whatever. What am I to judge that? I don't care what people do. As long as you're doing readings that you're not harming people uh, or telling them they have a curse on them or doing anything like that, you know, if you predict or don't predict, that's up to you. What you're, what you're comfortable with and what your client is seeking is all that matters. And again, 
not everybody is seeking a predictive reading. They're not looking for that. In this day and age, people are looking for so many different diverse ways of working with tarot. And again, the beauty of the internet is we can all get our grill out there and we can represent the different diverse faces of tarot. And people now have a smorgasbord to choose from and that's wonderful. Absolutely. Now, do you teach? I do teach, yes. Tell us about that. I do very rarely, I will open up a in per, an in-person class. Mm -hmm. And the in-person classes are, you know, super one-on-one. -on -one. I like to call it Gorilla Tarot because my goal is to get you to be a really fast, efficient reader. So when I do an in-person class, we are doing some pretty cool techniques that I don't uh, share in my digital classrooms. And the whole goal is like, you're going to learn how to read now in a different, in many different circumstances. So that way you can be a reader who thinks on your feet. I tell people, if you get an opportunity to do an in-person class with me, do it because the interaction is phenomenal. But I also teach digital classes. I have a signature program called Open for Business. That one I teach female entrepreneurs how to use tarot and astrology for their business decisions nice. and for timing their launches and all of that. Uh, my digital classroom, which actually just opened today, is a la carte tarot classes. And they're tarot classes for a variety of different things. So I'm like teaching a class for absolute beginners. I have a reversals class coming up. I have a class for how to set up your metaphysical business coming up. So I have lots of different things that I offer. And, uh, you know, the digital classes, by the way, have been really fantastic. They usually sell up very quickly. And it allows people who don't live here to connect and study with me. Right. So those are the different types of classes that I'm teaching as of now. That may also evolve. You never, right? Our, our businesses can, can keep on evolving as technology and as we evolve. Absolutely. But for now, so those are the different types of teaching I do. Beautiful, beautiful. I noticed, well, and I assume that all of that's available on your website for people who yep. are interested. Is that true? Okay. Yep. I noticed as I was going through your website, um, I really appreciated the, the style of your website. <laughs> you have such a, and you're such an interesting blend of grounded, modern, down to earth, professional, casual, and metaphysical. Mm -hmm. All rolled into one. Really, really interesting. And I think, you know, one thing I would love to see you do would be a class in branding. Oh, that's all. actually, I have notes. That's in the future. I'm way ahead of you, lady. <laughs> Branding is really near and dear to my heart because I'll tell you what, when I first started also going on the web, I thought I had to come off as, you know, what a professional should sound like. And, you know, I am very professional. I've done this work again a long time, but I'm very urban. You know, I listen to gangster rap. Uh, I have a picture of Rick Ross hanging above uh, my desk here. You know, I love to cook. I love to watch trash television. I'm really into Game of Thrones. And... Why hide that? So after a couple of years ago, I'm like, eh, I'm just going to put it out there because my in-person clients, they know what I'm all about. They know I'm quirky. They know I use the F word at times. Uh, they know that sometimes we'll be in a session and then we'll end up talking about something going on in the world. You know, so I, I don't hide any of that. I just put it all out there. And I think it's important to do that and to put your face out there. Mm -hmm. So once again, that people can decide whether or not you're the right person for them. There's people who are turned off by me. They're like, oh, my God, she's not esoteric enough. Or, oh, my God, she's, why is she talking about, you know, Jay-Z? You know, <laughs> there's some people who don't want that. And that's great. They can look, they can take a pass, and they can look for somebody else. They might want somebody maybe who's more soft and uh, gentle or, you know, I, I'm really a big believer. Just be yourself. And if people like you, they'll like you. If they don't, they don't. And that weeds it all out. And if you're weeded out and you have clients that are compatible with your personality, my work then is no longer miserable because I don't have somebody in my office who doesn't want to be dealing with my personality. Uh, and I'm not working with somebody who is uptight about the way I'm going to read things. So branding is near and dear to my heart. And, and I, I appreciate how well you have done it. 
Um, the F-bomb is such an interesting topic in tarot reading, and, and it is my nature. I mean, I did a lot of work on radio, and obviously, you know, if we're talking broadcast FM, AM radio, you don't drop the F-bomb, you know, so I'm good at not. <laughs> um, but in conversation, those words are in my vocabulary. And I've had some clients really appreciate a gritty perspective that they can absolutely understand. I have other clients who have not appreciated um, that same presentation. And I, I just think it's such an, an interesting thing. I, I have yet in 20 years to make a decision whether or not I use foul language in readings. Sometimes for me, it, sometimes for me it, it depends. Sometimes it's not going to like be effective. Right. So, I mean, if I have a 90-year-old lady, the last thing she needs to hear me do is spouting rap lyrics. That's not going to work for her, uh, you know. Uh, but sometimes the F word is very effective. Sometimes there's no other way to say it. And I always let people know, is it okay if I drop an F-bomb if I sense they're sensitive to it? Right. And you know what? Every time I've asked, I've never had anybody say no. Right. And it usually doesn't seem to bother people. And the people who know me and know me well know that I tend to say that word a lot. It's just part of my persona. You know, I grew up with brothers. I hang out with a lot of uh, guys. I hang out with a lot of musicians. And if you hang out with people like that uh, for any amount of time, it, your lingo really just becomes that. <laughs> so true, so true. Too many guys in my life. <laughs> Well, but here's a question, too. When you talk about being yourself, I've, I've done a lot of that, too. Most people know the music I prefer or, you know, that kind of thing. But we live in a country right now that is so amazingly politically divided. Mm -hmm. You know? And, you know, my first career was in politics, actually. Wow. So I have definite opinions about certain things, which I've made a point of not voicing because I don't want to alienate 50% of the country. Right. And many of our mutual friends on Facebook, you know, really will voice their opinions about things. Where do you go when it comes to politics? You don't have to share which way you lean if you don't want to. But oh, I don't mind leaning at all. Yeah, I don't mind telling you what I lean on. Uh, I, I worked uh, for an anarchist newspaper for a while. My politics are very, very left, and it just is the way I am. It's the way that I, I believe. But you know what? I've got a lot of beautiful, wonderful friends who are hardcore conservative. Mm -hmm. And my younger brother, who I'm very close to, is extremely conservative. And I'm one of these people, just like with business, you know what, I don't care what you believe in. As long as you're a decent human being, I don't care what your beliefs are. Maybe I'm not going to agree with you. Maybe some of your beliefs might make me raise an eyebrow. But, you know, I welcome people from every different type of background. And one of the things that I had the great pleasure of growing up with was a very bigoted father. Notice the words I'm choosing. Pleasure. My father was Archie Bunker. Oh and he had some of these ideas that were insane. If I told you some of his theories about the world, you'd be like, oh, my God. But he was an old guy. And I learned to be tolerant of that. I learned to be very, very tolerant. I get people in my office that are hardcore conservative. They know what I'm all about because I don't hide it. I don't hide anything with them. They know that when they're walking in that I am certainly leaning to a different flavor. But you know what? These are clients that... We're not there to do that. We're there to work on you. We don't care about what's happening out there in the world. Uh, that has nothing to do when you're coming in for a reading. And it also has no bearing to me on what kind of a person you are. So, you know, again, my world is colorful. I've got people from every stripe, every color, every political belief system in my life. And that they're very close with me. Uh, you know, when, sometimes people are surprised. One of my best girlfriends is a very hardline conservative. I don't care. I could care less. She's a great person. So I tend to look beyond that. And again, I'm not going to hide my stuff because I can't do that. I can't fake it with somebody. Uh, I have to be who I am. And if they do ask me, what do you think about, you know, blah, 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 this Obama? Well, I'll tell them the truth of how I feel. But to me, it's very matter of fact. I don't, you know, whatever. It's like that. Nice. Nice. I like that. 
And when did you decide to call yourself the tarot lady? And how <laughs> has that worked for you? Well, that's accidental, too. I'm telling you, everything's accidental around here. Because a lot of times what would happen is <laughs> my clients would say, <laughs> it's so stupid, actually. They'd say, um, oh, yeah, I had to make an appointment with that tarot lady. You know, because maybe they didn't remember my name, or they would just call me that tarot lady. Oh, yeah, you know, I, I was seeing this woman, this tarot lady. So that's the only reason why I chose it. It's not very original. It's just people call you that, you know, so that's what I used. Besides, my name was taken for uh, .com. So somebody already has my name, and they're using it for a very lovely account, but uh, couldn't use that. So I thought, well, this is what people call me. Might as well use it. I love it. I love it. So anything that I haven't asked you that you want to get out there, uh, either about yourself, your beliefs, your practice, uh, shameless self-promotion, anything else you want to put out there today? Well, let me tell you a little shameless self-promotion. Uh, I am doing these free teleseminars. We call them telegraphs with Bree Saucy. She's from Milagro Roots. She is a fantastic co-host. We put these little free teleseminars out there once a month where we interview people and talk about things in the metaphysical industry because both of us are very passionate about helping other metaphysical people achieve success in their businesses. So if you are somebody who is a reader, an astrologer, a healer, a root worker, you know, anything that leans toward the metaphysical and you really want to get your business going, uh, you want to check out those. You can find that all on my website. It's called Talking Shop with Teresa and Bree. So we're doing that once a month, and, and I hope that this is a great service to really inspire other people like you and me and in our industry to really get out there and make their businesses rock. Uh, so that's one of my shameless uh, self-promotions that I'm really excited about. Uh, other than that, uh, as far as my beliefs and stuff, hey, if you uh, are open-minded, if you like rap music, if you're into cooking and Game of Thrones, we're going to get on like a house on fire. <laughs> those are probably the, <laughs> uh, those are probably the little quirky things that I'm into. And um, people can just find more and learn more about me on my site, which is www.thetarolady.com. That is phenomenal, and actually, uh, you you just sparked a, a thought there for me. Oh, I know what I wanted to say. One of the things that you and I have in common in the way I, we do our businesses is making certain things available for free. Yes. And that is actually a really radical thing to do. There are many people who say you should never give anything away, because then people won't value it. Now, I found just the opposite to be true, that if you give it away, and I love to use the word service, it's a service, yep. and that's a beautiful thing, but it also is helpful in the business to let people get to know who you are and then to come and purchase your products. And I, I just yes. wanted to congratulate you for having figured that out and ask how that is working for you. Well, my whole mission with those things, I mean, people can do private mentoring with me for their businesses. And uh, my rates are not cheap. And the reason why they're not cheap is very specific because I want people who are hardcore serious about making their businesses work. There's nothing worse than mentoring somebody who, went, who goes and puts the money down and makes the time for you to work with them. And then they don't implement anything that you teach them. Right. So my prices for that are expensive because I'm not going to waste my time. It just isn't worth it for me. There is nothing more aggravating. But the free classes are my way to reach people who maybe maybe they want to implement, maybe they don't. It's none of my business. But if they don't want to invest in their businesses, at least here's some information to hopefully get you guys started right. So my mission is just, again, it's to serve. And I really love my metaphysical peeps, and I want them to succeed, whether they invest in the private mentoring or they just want to take these freebie classes and get inspired. It, it, you know, again, my only goal is to hopefully get them moving forward. You know, in our industry also, uh, it's largely female. Most of us that work professionally are women, and there's nothing more empowering than a woman being able to take care of her entire household and put that bread on the table. And ultimately, my goal 
with these things, and now I'm going to sound like a big time feminist here, is to get more women to be self-employed, taking control of their own financial destinies, and also at the same time, we're out there then helping people and making a good, solid living doing that. So everything that I'm putting out there with these freebies and stuff is to inspire my fellow women and guys too. I love you guys, but our industry is mostly women. And I love the idea of a sisterhood of women who are able to make a healthy living and not have to like depend on the man and we can take care of our children and live the way we want. So the freebie things that are out there, sometimes, yes, it does lead to business, but it's my one nudge to get people moving towards professionalism and to get over their fears so they can be doing what I'm doing too. Beautiful. So that's why I put it out there. Whether they invest with me or not, I don't care. I want to see them independent, self-employed. And I also like to say, I like to see, uh, this is going to be a little controversial here. I like to see them getting rid of what I call their tarot or metaphysical pimps, not working for the hotlines not working for the video services, not working for salons or stores. I like to inspire other women to be doing exactly what I'm doing so that they are keeping the profits for themselves and being able to take care of their family and live the life that they want. And so a lot of what I'm doing also is to help them find the way to do that. Because a lot of times it's scary to quit your real job or it's scary to get off the hotlines because you think, oh my God, I'm not going to make it out there. I want to get rid of that fear because I'm looking to see more of us out there doing what I'm doing. It's not that hard, ladies and guys. You know, your your point is good. I, I have not, by the time I was working in stores, they were happy to pay me to be there because I was a draw. Right. So I haven't done, you know, I haven't really worked for the pimps. Right. Uh, in fact, I've been a pimp, <laughs> but I was a fair pimp. And so I've not experienced that, but in talking to some of my students, it is true that some of the store owners are brutal. I can't oh, believe yes. the cuts they take. I, I can't, I, the, the working environment they provide, I never had to deal with that. But, you know, I think your point is good. Well, there's some stores that are really great. For example, there's a place in Detroit called the Boston Tea Room. And it's run by the gal named Heather Lee Nevere. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing her last name right. But she takes very good care of the people who work for her. She treats them with respect. I know other people that have had horrible, horrible experiences. I've got a really good friend that worked for one place. And not only did they take a terrible cut, but some of the things that they pulled with her were outrageous. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she thought she had to stay with that. Well, I'm proud to say that she now runs her own shop. She has people working for her, and she treats them right. So getting people to have that confidence is super important so that they don't feel they have to, that they have to settle. We can really create, when we talk about creating our own futures, we can create our own business futures the way we want to if we just have a little bit of know-how. If you just have someone who's done it before you say, Here's how to do it. Um, it's the best thing because you're going to see them doing it and you're going to do it then or at least try. And that is, again, one of my goals here is to get women. And, again, I don't want to sound like I'm sexist. Guys, too. But our industry, again, is primarily women. So uh, to really get them to change their mindsets about this so that they can be doing the work they love and making a good living. Beautiful. Teresa Reed, the tarot lady, I thank you so much for spending some time with us at the Psychic Cafe. Really appreciate it, and I, I hope we'll catch up again soon. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Many thanks to Teresa Reed, the tarot lady, for being on the Psychic Cafe. I hope you enjoyed her as much as I did. It's Memorial Day weekend. What an interesting time Memorial Day is. Of course, it's a time that we set aside to honor and to remember those who have given their lives in service to our country. It's also the unofficial start of the summer season. And that means different things depending on where you live. Up north, it's like a huge party. I understand it's raining and cold right now, but it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be the very first summer weekend. Now, down here in Florida, of course, it's like the opposite. This is the weekend that celebrates the end of season for us. 
But, you know, I was thinking, okay, Memorial Day can also be about looking at memories. And I have a fun little retrospective we're going to do now. For the past few weeks, I've been talking a little bit about Salvador Dali, of course, the surrealist artist. But before the surrealists were the Dadaists. And I happened to find, actually, it was given to me by Sean Morris of Live Bands Touring. He makes a lot of videos available for this show. I'm about to show you the very first video that Sean ever made. And it is of the Dadaist invasion at Lighthouse Point Park in New Haven back in the 1980s. Now, I remember this event, and I was trying to think, why wasn't I there? Why wasn't I there? I wasn't there because I was at Beth and Bear's wedding from the string band. It was the same day. So what you're going to see here is a very young Robbie Jam from the string band playing his Dada song at a Dada celebration. Of course, Dada is anti-war. And it's all about pushing the boundaries on art. And I think you'll see that. Right after that, you're going to get in the time machine and come back to the present. You'll see the same song being done this year for Robbie Jam's 50th birthday. So enjoy the art. Enjoy the music. Enjoy the time travel. Let's go. artistic ingenuity in it. It's just, it's, it's unbelievable. I'm so delighted that I came. I've learned a lot and I've been totally freed up.
what you'll find on the Psychic Cafe. Next week, I'm putting together an uber special show for you. Next week, June 2nd, we're doing Creating a Better World on the Psychic Cafe. I am asking a broad cross-section of people the same question. What is one thing we can do to create a better world? And we're going to play all those interviews and all those answers next week. I can tell you that each person I've interviewed so far has had a really smart 
really thoughtful answer and has kind of made me cry. So I think it's going to be a great show next week. I want to remind you about Global Tarot Circle. That's coming up this Tuesday, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. If you're at all interested in tarot, this is a free webinar, a chance for us to get together and share tarot skills. Go to tarotcircle.org for more information and for login. I want to remind you that I am available worldwide for private readings by Skype and by telephone. My phone number, 561-655-1160. You can learn all about me at tarotbychristiana.com. And we will see you next week on Christiana's Psychic Cafe. Have a great week.